Good morning, everybody. Um, it's a great opportunity here to talk about the human side of uh, shipping. And uh, I think it's very appropriate after what Mr. Fu has just said. Um, let me start. Our focus uh, in sailor society is to look at the wellness of seafarers. Wellness at sea, safety at sea. So where, where is the connection? Is there a connection? In many workplaces and HR departments, they approach safety and wellness as two separate efforts. But what is wellness? I think everybody has our own, uh, we have our own interpretation or definition of wellness. But fundamentally for us, we start with a very simple question, how are you? Now this morning when I was walking around, I, I heard everybody, how are you, how are you doing, how are you doing, how are you doing? It's become a, a very common phrase, courtesy. But if you think about it, it is actually one of the most complex and multi-dimensional question that you can ask. Because what does it mean to be well? The holistic wellness approach argues that to be well, you cannot be well only in one aspect of your life. You have to be well in all aspects of your life. Traditionally, the maritime industry thought of seafarers as only occupational human beings. The only thing that defined a good seafarer was whether or not he had good technical training. In our definition of wellness, we look at what, and, and we want the industry to look at the human side of a person. And this includes who we are as an emotional, social, intellectual, physical, and spiritual human being. How a seafarer experiences life at sea, how they react, how they manage a ship, is all related to him or her as an organized whole, a holistic, multidimensional, and unique human being. Safety at sea mostly is about compliance with uh, QSHE regulations and the implementation of various procedures on board. Wellness, on the other hand, can be viewed um, less seriously. It's typically voluntary and extends beyond work and into the seafarer's personal lifestyle. Safety and wellness are integral However, these initiatives are actually more connected than most of us realize. Both safety on board and seafarers' wellness will have a direct impact on productivity, sick pay, crew claims, reputation, and eventually the overall profitability of a shipping company. Safety uh, can be referred to in simple terms as health protection. Whereas wellness is health promotion. Today, there are best, there are good evidence to indicate that the aims of both health protection and health promotion, that these interventions are best achieved when they're working in concert. I'm going to go through uh, very briefly, very quickly, um, those aspects of wellness as we see it. Um, Sailor Society, we've been offering welfare and uh, uh, services to seafarers for the past 200 years. So we, we hope that uh, what we have observed over the last 200 years uh, would be helpful to the industry. Physical wellness. I think you probably heard that good sleeping and eating habits improve safety. Accidents can happen when seafarers experience tiredness or lack of focus. The fatigue management study identified lack of restorative sleep as the most common cause of accidents, meaning fatigue on a job is most often the result of poor sleep. Researchers also uh, point out that there are certain workplace problems that follows when there's lack of proper sleep. And these are longer reaction time, reduction of alertness, poor psychometric coordination, information processing difficulty, decreased task motivation, memory problems, and impaired concentration. 
Other studies found that the risk of workplace injury actually doubles in employees with sleep disorders. Poor diet and mismanaged body weight can also impact safety. The cause of obesity in the workplace, a study published in the Scandinavian Journal of Work, Environment and Health, indicated that not only do overweight and obese workers add more to an employer's healthcare costs, they are also more likely to suffer a workplace injury. So encouraging employees to adopt healthy eating habits can help them manage their weight and improve aspects of productivity such as memory, focus and sustain energy levels and helping them to stay fit, to stay safe will help employees avoid many common workplace injuries. I think this is a, a topic that is um, very hot right now. Mental health, stress. Um, for us, we look at uh, safety and wellness to include mental aspects with a focus on emotional wellness. Now, if you consider Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right near the bottom, you have food, rest, water, and just above that, safety. If these basic needs are not met, employees cannot truly function at their best. Whether a worker feels in danger due to the nature of the job or because of less apparent or perceived danger, improving, then improving safety in your workplace will have the potential to reduce distress and boost productivity. Uh, many studies have been done that shows a strong correlation uh, um, between mental health and uh, the lack of supportive social structure, um, increased frequency of uh, accidents when seafarers feel too lonely. It leads to all sorts of problems. There are seven independent studies that suggest that seafarers seem to be more affected by mental illnesses than any other ailment with officers being more prone than ratings. So this suggests a strong linkage between psychiatric illnesses or disturbances and a decreased ability of the seafarer to cope with job expectations and a negative impact on the safety culture of a ship. Stress and safety, I think this is um, something that um, is, is very common. As I see the lady walking up here, my stress level increases <laughs> because I probably have three minutes. <laughs> so when you're under stress, what happens is that your mind is on the source of the stress. You know, it creates a distraction. And it's the same for seafarers. You know, imagine if, you're, if you've got information about a problem at home and you're you know, climbing up a ladder or moving around a scaffolding trying to paint or finish up some other work. Part of your mind is actually on the problem and the other part of your mind is on trying to finish your work. This can actually cause accidents and injury. And, and because of this, this is why we, we pay a lot of attention to mental health, and we have done so for many, many, many years before it became a hot topic. And we give particular attention to coping techniques. I think that's important. Uh, having the stress and not being able to cope is terrible, right? Um, this is a slide that I think with statistics that many of you are quite familiar with, um, where it shows that a high proportion of people that have been interviewed, the first two are done by ITF, um, it shows that uh, there's a high percentage of seafarers that think that their co-worker is suffering from depression. Um, there are unverifiable data on suicides on board. Um, this is quite a serious thing. Let me give you an example. Is, is it real or not? Well, we have chaplains in 100 ports around the world. We work in 30 countries. And um, some three months ago, uh, chap my chaplain in Haldia, India, 
northeast of India, gave me a call and said, Gavin, what should I do, you know? Because he went visiting a ship and the galley was quiet, but a lone seafarer was sitting there. He didn't look right. He was smoking, 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 smoking. Everybody avoided him. There were, I think, 24 crew, 25 crew on board. Everybody avoided him. My chaplain went up to him, you know, said, how are you? Started talking to him. Just kept quiet. This is what we call ministry of presence, just to be there. And then all of a sudden, the guy just broke down. He said, you know, if you knew what happened to me, you would be crying too. And, and then he told my chaplain what happened to him. He was sailing from Europe down to India, and he got news that his son, age six, had died. Six years old, died. This man, he couldn't sign off. He reached India, and then he had about one month left of his contract. And he had to stay on because he needed to keep working so that he could support the rest of his family. I, I, I can't imagine, you know, that kind of situation. So, depression, stress, it leads to a lot of problems. Suicide, nobody wants to talk about it, but it's there, it happens. We, we have handled cases um, and, and it's not nice. But it happens. So because of this, we introduced suicide prevention modules. How, how can you get your co-workers to identify signs of depression or potential suicide? Uh, we, we're not experts, but just to provide the support. We introduced this in our Wellness at Sea training and Crisis at Sea response training programs for seafarers and company personnel aim at setting up I think after the incident has happened, direct communication rules between seafarers and companies. We know in cases where companies talk about such things in a vague or ambiguous manner, it actually all adds to stress, produces misunderstandings, and leads to potential disobedience. My stress level is increasing. Very quickly, social. So we also touch on the social wellness of seafarers um, because seafarers not only work together, but when they complete their work, they have to live in the same social environment. It, it causes a lot of tension sometimes, you know. Multinational crews, right? I've, I've had uh, my chaplain telling me one ship came in, wow, eight nationalities. Not easy. So we look at uh, helping seafarers. I think seafarers... Um, have problems communicating. Communication is one of the big uh, issues. If you look at incident reports, it is evident that interpersonal skills and interpersonal communication fail seafarers many times. And um, inadequate communication is listed as one of the three main factors in shipping accidents. We're almost there. Intellectual wellness, um, this portion, we, we, we want companies to stress more and provide more knowledge beyond the traditional knowledge uh, for a seafarer, uh, including seafarers' rights, piracy, financial matters. Because enhanced knowledge will ensure better mediation of day-to-day -day incidents by negotiating these incidents with confidence and adequate comprehension. Not only will companies benefit, but I think the severe stress factor that comes with potential rights abusers or unfair treatment will be greatly reduced. Last, spiritual wellness. Uh, here we don't, we, <laughs> it's not proposed that seafarers now specialize in religious or, or spiritual studies. It, we believe that a person's belief, whatever it may be, actually facilitate an active attitude towards coping and the strengthening of social support in response to stress. Companies should, if they can, provide a reflective space 
where seafarers can focus on identification of potential spiritual coping mediators as part of a strategy to understand and help them prepare for life at sea and continued life at sea. So in conclusion, our aim is not to... Our aim is actually to take seafarers on a journey of self-exploration. We are not experts of seafarers' lives. They are the experts. But we want to start a conversation, companies, seafarers, ourselves, to create a space where seafarers can grow to become better seafarers, better husbands, better wives, better children, better parents in a safe environment. Thank you. <laughs>